Hello guys, welcome to ASP Screencast on the muscular system for anatomy and physiology. We have a look at the unit then so far. We've uh, So far we're in this situation now where we're looking at joint types we've looked at. Okay, following that we looked at movements at joints. Then we looked at the kind of planes of movements. Now what we're looking at uh, finally is to sew up the unit as you see here where it's got um, kind of joints, muscles and movements. We now need to have a look at the kind of muscles that cause all these movements to take place okay so you know it, we need to look at what muscle causes flexion at the elbow to take place we need to have a look at what muscle causes extension at the knee to take place and in order to do that we have to look at how muscles work in pairs so muscle role we'll talk about how muscles work in twos throughout the body and then we'll look at in these movements what the contraction types are and what they're called so if I go on to this now we're going to have a quick look at if you remember the exam questions I showed you when we did joints and movements so you know a key thing to have a look at here then is as follows so if you look you've got these kind of movement analysis tables we should now be in a position where we could talk about not only the movements but also we could talk about um kind of planes as well but this kind of shows you what it'd be so at the knee you'd have to be able to which you've already done in exact in, in a lesson is be able to kind of look at this and say right can i say what sign of a joint type can i say what movement takes place and this one is kind of showing you an arrow so the arrow there is kind of showing you saying right it's going upwards so join that upwards movement what's the movement called and then what is the muscle then that is causing or pulling um that movement into place and then we have to be able to talk about the antagonist muscle on top of that so you can see the idea. You might, at the end of this, want to have a quick go at these two exam questions as a little um, knowledge checker, um, and yeah, and take it from there. So, ultimately, um, when you're doing your notes today, you should be looking to get them somewhere along these lines. So, first of all, we need some basic definitions of agonist and antagonist muscles. What does that mean? Um, following on from that, your next job should be to kind of. Um, you can either do a little kind of uh, a Cornell notes and add all the muscles and kind of give yourself a little question as a description where they are. For example, you might write down uh, after agonist and antagonist. This is completely up to you. Is you could put something down here by saying, right, agonist, antagonist, and you might put something like um, a deltoid. And when you put the deltoid, you might say um, the deltoid is located in the shoulder um, as your little description. You don't have to do that because I'll give you another option. You're going to get a muscles diagram in a minute. When you get that muscles diagram uh, on here I'll also send you a blank copy that you can have a go at and um, see if you can kind of practice that tomorrow uh, or whatever before the lesson okay then you've got your concentric contraction eccentric contraction um, and isometric contraction they're the key focuses with obviously all the muscles in the middle so first thing then Muscles work in pairs. This is a key point. So antagonistic muscle contraction refers to the concept of muscles working in twos so if you look out down here, or if you look at the key terms to start with, you've got on here the agonist. Okay, so the agonist uh, is the muscle responsible for creating a movement. Okay, and I always think with this is the best way to remember this is it's the muscle during a, a move that's in agony. It's the agonist. It's in agony. Now you look down to here, and I think right. The opposite to that then is the antagonist muscle and this isn't the prime mover this isn't the main mover this is the one that's kind of works it kind of relaxes as um the, the kind of agonist muscle is working i always think of that's a good way to kind of to look down here so if you look at this now and you imagine that you've got this uh, there's a dumbbell in here as that movement comes up here and you lift it up what happens is this muscle will contract and it will shorten that is because it's in agony okay it's the agonist muscle but if you come down to here this muscle which you'll probably already be aware of. this one's a bicep brachii the one behind it the tricep brachii will not be in agony and what will happen with this muscle is i always think if you think of the word antagonize from antagonist it's there relaxing laughing looking at the bicep in agony thinking my job's pretty easy here so you've got that then they work in pairs this one agonist this one antagonist when the movement comes up here so if i was going to put this anatomically where that comes up here the angle between these this joint these two bones here at the joint decreases this is called flexion so during flexion of the elbow the bicep brachii is the agonist and the bicep and the tricep brachii is the antagonist so that's kind of how they work in pairs there's a little example for you what i'd like you to have a go at now is is to keep it now when i turn over this i'm going to click on and you're going to get all the muscles your job is to put this onto your own muscle diagram you can create your own you can use mine and um, on top of that you can just start to describe whereabouts they are in the body so if I just stick all these on them, okay, so you've got um, key muscles here. I mean, I look at this now and think, you know, I think it's now you pause it uh, and get your um, 
answers up on here okay so put them on so just have a look at them um, add the detail to your uh, muscle diagram and see what you can remember okay so you can watch this check it as much as you like so all these need to be named correctly uh, so yes have a look at that um, and your job is to try and memorize those for the start of next lesson okay so i'll move on from there then so if, if i just go a little bit on here then so you've got if you see they work in pairs i mean the paired movements here anything that's at the front has a direct opposite at the back we'll have a little, little look at that in lessons um so if i go on to here then when these muscles are contracting they're something called isotonic contraction which is movable contraction so if i said to you now when a muscle's contracting the first contraction type would be concentric contraction okay so muscle contraction which shortens while producing tension so this is any time when a muscle kind of contracts and it's in agony okay and it's on the upwards phase usually um, it's a concentric contraction because it shortens under tension that usually means it kind of lumps up and you think of a bicep curl your bicep will come shorter together and, and, and come out a little bit which we'll have a look at in the lesson on top of that you've got eccentric contraction uh, which is where muscles uh, lengthen under tension so ultimately when you're looking at these kind of key terms you're looking concentric contraction shorten tension keyword eccentric contraction muscle contraction which lengthens under tension and that is kind of uh, if you think about that now uh, that's on the, say for example the downward phase of the bicep curl the bicep brachy would lengthen okay or if on a yeah, we'll leave it there. There are your key definitions. You finally won then. It's isometric contraction. This is when muscles contract, but they stay the same length. So these three terms will be looked at at the very end of the lesson. So if you look over here, a nice little example. If you look at this, concentric contraction as the bicep brachy shortens to create flexion of the elbow, you can see this. As it goes up that way, that muscle shortens and the tension causes it to come out a little bit. Okay, then on the way down, okay, uh, down here, when it's coming down from the top of the bicep curl, this then shows how this muscle is lengthening. You can see that, it makes sense. And then when you're just holding the weight, for example, where you're just in a neutral position, isometric, it stays at the same length. So this bit here, this section is really, really towards the end of the lesson and maybe into the lesson after. So what I'd say to you, the number one focus of this um, kind of screencast is for you to make sure you're at a point where you can label all of these muscles. This is really important because you'll be using these uh, in the lesson when you're trying to go back to, if I go back into your kind of early slide, which was this. This is how we're looking now. So your job is basically to see which muscles work in pairs. That's my job at the start of the lesson. And if you wanted to look at this now, so if you look at the knee, joint type, movement, and the agonist and antagonist. So what's that movement where the knee, knee comes out there and it kind of, well, you see if you can do that. And agonist, antagonist, pair, pair. What's the one in front? What's the one behind? And that is your job. Just have a little play around with those. Learn the muscles. Get them onto the diagram I'm going to send with you. Uh, and make sure you know what an agonist muscle and antagonist muscle is. Um, and if you can just put those notes at the end, which are the kind of concentric, eccentric, isometric. That'll be something we'll look at separately. Okay, thanks very much.